Hey, this is Nathan Benja from Youth Revival and just want to say it's great to have you join us today. Uh, a couple of things that you can do is uh, share this uh, with people you know who would love this. Uh, subscribe or follow wherever you're listening to this or watching this from and make sure you hit that notification button so you can be notified of when we put out content. We hope this content inspires you and helps you to start a youth revival in the church. We know you're going to love this and because we love it. And so let's get into the first youth revival combo. Hey, welcome to the first youth revival combo. And I'm here with a friend of mine, uh, Dave Niblock from Life Church. And Dave, thanks for thanks for doing this. Honor to be here, Nathan, for the uh, very first one. Yes, historic. Historic. It's yeah. the very first, and uh, thank you for that. Why don't you just explain, Dave, a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do? Sure. I'm getting old now, <laughs> um, but I've been involved in the uh, youth ministry and young adults ministry for uh, nearly 19 years. Wow. Um, and came up here for university in 2001 in Leeds, stuck around um, for a few years, went to Bible college, came back, and then came on staff here to work as the youth pastor in 2008. Mm -hmm. And uh, alongside all of that, working with a great team, just worked through our local church youth ministry, which I still love doing, still loving putting into. Yeah. And then obviously I see uh, things alongside that, such as our What Nations Youth Conference, mm -hmm. our Young Adults Movement Conference, uh, but more than that, really, just believing, sort of investing in the lives of young people, helping mm -hmm. develop leaders, um, just to reach young people and just to maximise their potential. And then also, I'm involved here, obviously, at Life Church across our campuses, Bradford, and then more so in Leeds. Yeah. So it's great, love it, and um, yeah, it's cool. And you're a Liverpool fan. Hundred percent. And so, at time of recording, Liverpool are in the title race. They are, and I don't want to put a curse on this. <laughs> um, but I say it here first, we're going to win the league. You're going to win the league. Either this year <laughs> or, yeah, in, yeah. or in the next 30. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how are Arsenal getting on, Nathan? Yeah, I wasn't going to mention that. Okay, but, um, yeah. Need some leadership development there. Yeah, well, we're calling this pod podcast this uh, into, you know, youth revival. We're believing for revival in Arsenal. Uh, you need more than a revival, mate. You know, we have a vision of where we want to be. <laughs> you need, a, res away you need a resurrection. <laughs> yes, we do. We definitely do. Um, well, e even just thinking about that, like many times in ministry, we have a vision of where we want to be, right. but where we are today doesn't look like that. Maybe there are church leaders who right. are wanting to see a youth revival, yeah. uh, a movement across young people, uh, or even youth leaders who have a vision for what they see, but it's not currently happening. What would you What would you say to those people? Yeah, it's a good question. I think that's probably the main tension that most people, not just youth pastors face, but leaders face in general. Yeah. They have their aspirations mm. of where they want to be, mm. and then they have their present reality. Yeah. And between the present reality and their aspirations is what's called a big gap. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it is in that gap which takes most leaders out. It is in that gap where there's massive disappointment. Yeah. Uh, but the reality is, even if you do get to the point of your aspiration, the aspirations will continue to move. Yeah, true. So whatever your dream is, the dreams keep moving. Yeah. So I think that's why Paul speaks about in the New Testament, how, how you've got to become content. Yeah. Because if you're not content, you'll always be frustrated with where you are. But alongside that, I still think you can still have desires and dreams for growth and momentum and change. Um, one thing I've always thought about, really, when it comes to that gap between the present reality and the aspiration, for example, in youth ministry, yeah. so often we focus on the methods mm. and we think it will be the method that gets us to the aspiration. Mm -hmm. So if I can change the time of the program, if we can bring in this, if we can bring in that person, if we can buy more new lights, if we... You know, we focus on the program yeah. and the methods around it. And those things are important, but they are not as important as the mindsets. Great. And I sometimes think as leaders, we focus more on methods than we do mindsets. Yeah. And it is the mindset that brings change. So it is the mindset that brings growth. Yeah. You think of Moses when he leads the Israelites out of Egypt mm. to the promised land. That was the aspiration. Yeah. And there was a whole lot of method to it, but really what brought them or there or took you know Joshua and Caleb there to a point was and what ultimately helped hurt Moses long term was the mindset 
so of good. the Israelites on that journey. Yeah. Because you know, no matter what the method's like, if if you don't have the right way of thinking, you know, the Bible says, "As a man thinks, so is he." Yeah. I always say, "As a youth ministry thinks." so is it that's great and so i think it's massively important just to keep working with your team and yourself as a leader with regards to how is your mind yeah you know how's it thinking are you are you are you do you have a big mentality or do you have a small mentality do you have a generous mentality or do you have a poverty mentality Mm. do you have a creative mentality or is your mentality a bit stuck because as a youth pastor there's just always got to be stuff going on there which hopefully will facilitate growth and change that's amazing. Mm. And what would be, um, so like here, I know you have this phrase that you've kind of picked up, we go again. <laughs> would that be one of those mentalities, one of those mindsets, one of those vehicles, like that phrase being a vehicle to, you know, hey, we might not be where we want to be, but hey, Friday, we had a great Friday. Yeah. But we'll go again, again on the Friday. Yeah, I mean that was inspired by uh, Liverpool myself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so um, we go again came about by I think the biggest thing in youth ministry is faithfulness and perseverance. Great. You know, most youth pastors and youth leaders don't last a long time, mm. and sometimes they'll have this amazing five nil victory, metaphorically mm. speaking, yeah. on a Friday night, and like big numbers and like loads of youth got saved and like tuck shop sales were big. <laughs> and they'd be like, "Wow, well, revival's here." Mars bar sold out. Mars bar sold out. Milky Way's <laughs> going through the roof, and it's like you go come away going, "That's it, we've made it." Yeah. And then the following Friday, for you know, it's snowing or it's raining or someone has a party, and boom, you back down to sort of what yeah. you were in terms of its atmosphere and its feel, yeah. and you can get quite despondent and discouraged. And I think I just try to help encourage our team that you know, if we win. Yeah. And we have a great Friday night or a great midweek or a great season, we go again. Yeah, great. And if we lose, mm. we go again. Yeah. We don't give up because we're in this for the long haul. Great. And, you know, I think one of my things has always been we don't want to create and develop short haul leaders. So we want to develop long haul yeah. leaders. It's like when you go on a short haul flight, I don't know, from uh, Leeds to Belfast, for example, you're up and down in 45 minutes. Yeah. It's, you know, anyone can do that. Mm. But to go on a long haul flight from, I don't know, the UK to Sydney, Australia yeah. requires, you know, you've got to buckle up, you've got to yeah. settle down, you know, you've got to get your snacks, get your snacks. You've got to plan for that. Download the Netflix you, shows. Loads of them. Yeah. Because you're in it for a long time. Yeah. And I think we want to create a culture where, you know, as a youth leader, like you're not just in it for six months, That's quick so burst, good. short yeah. haul, but you're in this for the long haul. Yeah. So 18, 19 years, myself and some of us in our team have, you know, done equal length. Brilliant. And I think young people, like we've seen young people come from kids' church to youth to YA to get married. Wow. Like what a joy that is. Yeah. Because there's so much instability in a young person's life, yeah. even in their personal world at home, where mum or dad might be there, they might be gone and mm. change school, teachers are changing and moving, friendships, people are moving. Yeah. But I love the fact that they can come to the church mm. and there's a whole bunch of leaders, mm. you know, who will stick. So stick good. with them yeah. you know faithful stick closer than a brother almost and just be there yeah. no matter if their life's going well no matter if their life sucks that you know what we're going to go again in an, in an inconsistent world we become the consistent yeah 100% and we're there yeah you know that's why like, I, I love that we are pretty much uh, youth is going to be Friday, 7 yep. till 9. We are there yep. for you every Friday. I think the consistency is massive yeah. and being present. Yeah. You know, I always say builders, builders. if I'm a builder, I want to be on site. Great. You know, there's nothing worse than walking, driving past, you know, like roadworks and there's no builders working on it. Yeah. It's like, come on, we want builders to be on site. Yeah, so we, so we encourage leaders, hey, this is... This is, this is every week, like you're saying, this is Friday. And if it's raining, if it's windy, if it's sunny, if there's something else going on, if there's a concert in town, hey, we're still happening. Yeah. Sure, we might lose a few, but we are going to continue to be here. We're yeah. not going to be, our program and our calendar is not going to be determined by what's going on out there. Great. We've got to stay, we've still got to stay focused and fixed yeah. on what God has called us to build here. Yeah. And um, I love the thought of building. Mm. You, obviously yourselves and Life Church here, you've built Rock Nations, mm. of which uh, the conference we've been coming to for nine years. This will be our ninth year. So Come big on. thank you. You've inspired you guys are, us. You guys are long term. I think you yeah, need. I think yeah. you need a free pass next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of the things that always, always impacts me and impacts, I, I make sure it impacts our team is that. 
sometimes you can go to conferences and youth conferences and the first night can be a bit like a warm up hmm. like we're warming up for the main right. event but when we turn up to rock nations there's instantly this expectation hmm. this atmosphere that actually this is amazing and mm. there's this high level of engagement with worship yeah. and the message and for many people in churches sometimes we kind of discount those things because oh will will kids like this will mm. kids get into this um how have you built that because uh, mm. that doesn't happen just by accident it's a good question again i mean lot nation's been going for years now obviously yeah. steve gamble started that yeah. uh beginning of the 2000s and We've had the privilege to take that on, but Rock Nations has always had something on it. Yeah. And I think you have to be aware of the God factor. Yeah. You know, we can't manufacture this. No. We can't manufacture this anointing. Mm. We can't manufacture this. This is something that God has had his hand on. Mm -hmm. We've never worked massively hard on, you know, trying to engage loads of numbers or churches. It's yeah. almost like God's hand has been on it and God has drawn people to it. Yeah. Um, but I do think you can work not just at conferences, but in your local church yeah. Friday nights on uh, on two things. I would call them internal momentum and external momentum. Great. And I think the internal momentum is the development of expectancy, yeah. the faith, mm. uh, the passion. Mm. I mean, so our youth and probably your youth weeks in advance of Rock Nations are excited about it. Yeah. You know, you play the promo, it's like, come on! <laughs> You know, leading up yeah. to it, they're here late, setting up, prepping, they're getting ready for it. So they're almost, there's almost like this New Testament app, book of Acts kind of hunger yeah, and right. expectation for what's going to happen yeah. anyway. So as they hit into the Friday night, it's like we haven't got to warm them up. It's almost like they've been warmed up for weeks. Yeah. And I think that's an internal momentum. And like I'm saying, that, how do you develop that? I think you, you talk about, you know, what's going to be happening, but you focus on the why it's going to be happening. Right. And from that, there's an excitement and expectancy. And young people are naturally pumped about stuff anyway. Yeah, yeah. If it's vibey and if it's fun yeah. and if there's going to be loads of guys and girls there, <laughs> there's already an expectation within them that we're going to have the best time. Yeah. And so I think it's been built year on year out, year in, year out. That momentum is established now. So people almost like know what to expect. Yeah. And I think expectations are important mm. in terms of building expectation, but then also trying to fulfill those expectations. Yeah. And so whenever young people come to Rock Nations, they know like we're going to work hard on making this campus environment really fun, Great. really engaging, yeah. bright, yeah. positive, safe, mm -hmm. um, encouraging. Um, they'll be able to engage in lots of stuff that they've never engaged with before, activities and fun stuff. Um, and so I think we try and speak about that why, you know, so there's an internal momentum that develops inside every leader and every young person. Mm -hmm. Then I think there's the external momentum. Yeah. And there are some of the things that we can do around production. Yeah. There are some of the things we can do around volume, around lighting, around media. Yeah. Some of the things we can do around songs. Yeah. And I just think creativity is huge. Yeah. And I think sometimes what we do in youth ministry is we just do what's been tried and tested before. Yeah. But I think there should be an innovation Great. in youth ministry yeah. within the church. Yeah. Which is like, well, let's give it a shot. Let's yeah. give it a go. Yeah, definitely. And I think from that, as we get our creative minds going amongst us as a team and young people, you know, we'll have thoughts about songs or videos, uh, all of those things, which I think help contribute, even like our stage design, which you could go, well, that's a bit shallow. But actually, no, it's just people using their creative yeah, gifts. Definitely. And they get ownership, they get, ownership yeah. they get passion behind it. And you add all of those things in and they're like little percentages mm. and so they all add you know stage design is not going to change anyone's life no. but it just adds one or two percent yeah the song adds two or three percent yeah uh, the lighting or the or the pyrotechnics or whatever it may be we know they don't change lives yeah but what they do is they help create a bit of an external environment yeah. an external momentum and when an external momentum matches an internal momentum it's like this reaction yeah and that's why I think at what nations and other times throughout our church you sense there's this energy yeah there's this buzz mm. there's this expectancy there's this like you know I know Craig show refers to it in one of his books there's this it yeah factor yeah it's definitely. like it's hard to define it it's hard to create it because next week let's go and try and create it somewhere else and it just doesn't happen no, yeah but it's just this it and I think it's a mixture of mixture of the God factor right and then this internal external momentum yeah. working together one of the things that uh, just picked up, you obviously mentioned around the fun yeah. and, you know, 
like the campus, you know, yeah. your your church buildings, like, hey, we're gonna, these aren't gonna look like church. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're gonna actually make them fun for young people. And one of the things that I think has been key for us is that we've got young people involved in doing that. Yeah. Because uh, there may be many people, and they, hit, you know, we hear hear us talk, and obviously we we mentioned Rock Nations Conference talking thousands, but it might be someone with twenty young yeah. people, and that's one of the things I can do is, hey, we're meeting in a church building, but let's not make this look like a church building. Yeah, let's create fun and let's create, you know. So there's already they walk in and already like walls come down yeah. on people's hearts yeah. and different things. I think that's so key. Yeah. But you would be doing worship and word and, and that, and, you know, ministry stuff uh, every single week. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, we just made a commitment. You know, there are like non-negotiables. Yeah. And, you know, that, I mean, we're creative with that. Sometimes it might be a panel. Yeah. Sometimes it might be more testimony based. Yeah. Um, sometimes it might be like small groups that we break into. But we will always have an element of the word within our Friday right. nights. Um, it's, it's the word that changes lives. Yeah. And so... We are amongst leading in the amongst young people the most biblically illiterate generation yeah. ever. Mm. They're not taught the Bible at home. They're not taught the Bible in school anymore. Um, very rarely. And so, fifty or fifty years ago, for example, most people would have had an awareness of certain aspects of the Bible. Yeah. Our constitution within our government has been built on the Word of God. Yeah. But young people these days aren't brought up knowing it. Yeah. But within it is obviously life-changing power yeah, and so we do our best to engage young people in the word and try and help them develop a hunger for it yeah. and a connection with it not just on a Friday night or a Sunday yeah. but throughout the week yeah, and then worship yeah I mean our church loves worship I love worship and I think yeah. it's just amazing and I think our, our young people come alive with worship yeah and before and after, you know, we get the tracks going, the DJ will be <laughs> getting the music going, they'll all be dancing, but there, there's, most of our young people love the, well, all of them love the worship. In fact, I remember one time we did this night where we decided not to do worship and we just engaged loads of local kids from the community mm. to come and uh, like we had a DJ and we had all, you know, pizza, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. And the complaints that we had from all these kids was, where's the worship? <laughs> And these were wow. from unchurched kids. Wow. Why? Because there is something supernatural about yeah, it. Definitely. There is something about the presence of God within it mm. that cannot be found anywhere else. Mm. Can't be found on Radio One. Can't be found on, you know, TV. It, there is something about engaging with a bunch of young people, lifting yeah. their hands in worship, with young people leading them, yeah. singing God songs. That is just powerful. And so, pretty much a non-negotiable. Every week will be that yeah. we we have that. But we make sure we have massive fun as well because right. we want our young yeah. people to have fun some of them are quite intense some of them are quite serious some of them are dealing with a whole heap of issues like all people do mm. and sometimes home life's not fun school life's not fun so when they come here we want that to be fun but like yeah, you're saying yeah, getting right. young people involved in it because i'm old now i don't yeah, yeah. i don't necessarily know what's fun for a 15 year old no, yeah. i've got ideas but normally sometimes wrong and so <laughs> you know table tennis tables probably not suffice anymore like yeah. there's what can they do what do they think would be cool yeah. And a lot of it, when we find, is they just love to hang out. They yeah, love just definitely. to chat. They love just to sit on sofas and eat food and drink and chat, but with the music going and just good, creative, engaging, fun environments. Yeah. So uh, just flipping back to the word, and obviously mm. you speak and you speak at Rock Nations. And mm. uh, one of the things that uh, I'm, I, I always love when you speak is, well, because I love football, and you use things <laughs> that you're passionate about when you speak. and. We talk, you talked there about you know biblically illiterate generation, the most uh, illiterate generation mm. biblically. How does that affect the way you prepare a message for young people? How does that affect the way you would deliver that? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely changed in recent years mm. where I would normally go turn to book of Matthew chapter 6. Yeah. You know, like a lot of people won't even know where book of Matthew is and most people won't even be carrying a Bible yeah. with them anymore. If they have it on their phone, it's alongside a whole heap of apps which are going to distract them throughout yeah. the night. So we'd normally put the, the passages on the screen. Mm -hmm. And normally now I'd say, hey, this is the Bible. This is what we believe about the Bible. This is why we believe the Bible is still really important. Yeah. And then I think when I go into communication, I normally call it an encouragement sandwich. Right. So I try and bring massive encouragement at the beginning. Yeah. And in the middle of it will be some teaching, yeah. some... Um, thoughts some uh, maybe some correction some maybe ways of how to live life what the Bible says yeah, yeah. 
and then finish it off with encouragement right so that they know the beginning and end they're always going to be encouraged yeah and we don't want to wag fingers no at young people um, we don't want to judge them but we have got to equip and help them yeah. make wise decisions. Yeah. So mostly when we're speaking, we're normally speaking about relationships. We're normally speaking about choices. Great. We're normally speaking about identity. Yeah. We're normally speaking about purpose. Mm. And we pretty much just roll around that, you know, yeah. that those topics ever get. And we have different titles and we'll come up with different themes with them. But really most every, you could say nearly every teenager in the UK is dealing with relationships, yeah. is dealing with identity mm. questions, is dealing with aspects around purpose. Mm. And so, you know, that's pretty much where we hit. And there's plenty of stuff in the Bible to talk about that. Definitely. Um, and then, you know, we some people would speak for short amounts of time. Here we try and do between 20 and 30 minutes mm -hmm. um, because we believe that, you know, if we can develop in our communication that there's enough in the Bible and there's enough in our own lives as we give ourselves away we yeah. encourage our communities give some stuff of you give some self of your way yeah. like you know when i talk about football yeah. or i talk about my own weaknesses or i talk about my own mistakes right. i'm giving some stuff away yeah. and when you've put in a bit of humor in there when you put in a bit of illustration in there when you've put your three points in a poem in there <laughs> before you know it your time's gone yeah. and then if we want to engage him in on a sunday as well we don't want to go from like five minutes on a friday night to 35 minutes yeah, on a sunday so, good, yeah. so we try and bridge that gap a little yeah. bit but I think we're always trying to improve how we communicate yeah. and we've definitely not mastered it. Um, I don't think we ever will, no. but we just want to do our best to engage and not just see every young person as, you know, this, this Christian kid who's been brought up knowing the scriptures, knowing the commandments. Yeah. They don't. We've got to bring the Bible to life. Yeah, definitely. And we always would normally speak about Jesus within the Bible. Right. Sure, we might go to the Old Testament, but we'd always bring it back to Jesus because yeah. they need to know like yeah. they need to know who Jesus is yeah. and, and it is Jesus it is that message that changes yeah. their lives and yeah. it, it, that is what we want to do uh, one of the things that I realised is actually uh, most of our young people now will uh, after 12 minutes they'll just switch off Right. so you've got to have those hooks back in yeah. like a story Yeah. you know even like you know uh, saying phrases like, oh, let me tell you a story about this. Yeah. Or instantly they're like, yeah. hey, I want to I yeah. hear about you. Yeah, yeah. I want to know the gossip. I want to know yeah. what's happening. I think that's uh, so key and so vital. It is funny that because there's, it's amazing. Sometimes the people, people will say, oh, young people aren't interested or they're not engaged. Mm. But they will be if yeah. there's the right hooks, like yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Just on a funny thing, I was speaking recently in, another, in, um, in Sweden, not long ago, in a youth service. And I was coming to the point in my message where it was, you know, like, it's dramatic and it's like <laughs> pulling on emotion, like the keys are up, you know, yeah, like yeah. I'm, go I'm going for it, like I'm right in this point. <laughs> and all these low hundreds of youth were, like sat on the floor. Mm. Um, and then someone like near the front in the middle of a bunch, around a bunch of guys, he like, he full on trumps. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Like, let's one go. Like... <laughs> And everyone started laughing. Wow. I'm like, talk about triggers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he lets one go loud, like obviously accidentally. Yeah. And I'm trying not to, I'm like 100% trying to stay focused. <laughs> but like inside, I'm laughing. I had to move away on the stage, like away from them. And I can just see their shoulders like go like that. <laughs> and for the next 15 minutes, like they were pretty much lost because yeah. they were laughing about that yeah. stuff. But, you know, it just, it just shows you, I mean, it's a funny thing, but yeah. You know, people will get their focus back yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the right thing. With, with the right hook. Yeah. yeah. So we all need a, a trumping machine or something. 100%, especially yeah, on Sundays. Yeah. Yeah, Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when they're asleep. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, thanks, Dave, for doing this. You're welcome. And uh, thanks for being part of this. If there was one thing, we'll just finish this, if there was one thing you'd love to encourage, maybe a church leader, a youth leader who's wanting to see a youth revival take place in their church, what would it be? Oh, so much stuff. I think it's just, you know, believe the best. Yeah. Believe the best in people. Mm. Believe the best about your team. Mm. Believe the best about your young people. Believe the best about your church. Mm. Believe the best about your resources. So believe the best about the finances that you have. Because yeah. it's so easy to become cynical. It's so easy to become slightly negative. It's so easy. And I'm not saying we don't talk real. We need to be real and we need to be honest. Yeah. But I think if you can just go into every week believing this Friday is going to be 
great. It's yeah, going to be special. Yeah. That our leaders have got so much gift and potential in them. Yeah. Let's get it out of them. That our young people are world changers. I think it just changes your perspective, changes your mindset. Yeah, so and so you step into your Friday nights or your Sundays or your small groups. You step into it, you know, like with a spring in your step, yeah. with some passion in your spirit. Mm. And I think, you know, from that, that becomes contagious. Mm. So that's what I'd say. But it's been an honor speaking to you, Nave, on oh, this first one. You're doing pleasure. a great job. Thanks, mate. Love what you're doing. Love the youth ministry and the church that you're building in Chesterfield. Thanks. And um, you guys have always been yeah. amazing. So, uh, yeah, well done. Yeah. Good on you. And on the love part, thank you very much for everything that you've done mm. for us personally. And uh, I know people can check out Life Church, their website, mm. Rock Nations, and uh, such a great resource for the church. But big thanks for being There's a lot of love this. in there. There's a lot know, of love I in know, this know, I feel I like know. hugging you, but I can't I, get that. I know. Anymore. Shall we go back to the football, Arsenal, Liverpool? No, we're no, not no, doing no, that. No, but thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. We'll see you soon.